Unhappiness is a result of pain on demand. Right? Pain on demand, like Netflix of unhappiness, hmm? is basically you saying, you know what happened last Friday? Let me play that again uh -huh. and suffer from it. And then let me add a little bit to it. Right? So your boyfriend says something or girlfriend says something uh, harsh on Friday. You go on Sunday and say, uh, let me remember that and cry. Mm -hmm. And then on Monday you go, uh, yeah, he doesn't love me anymore. And then on Tuesday you say, oh, damn, I hate dating. And then you go like, oh, on, on Wednesday, I'm going to spend the rest of my life alone. And you just can build as much drama as you want around it. It's all happened last Friday. And by the way, he's not going to show up and apologize. Right? So you can, you can be unhappy for as long as you want. Until you tell him or her that you're unhappy, nothing's going to happen. Right? So what is useful? Now, and by the way, this is, this is something I call the suffering cycle. Mm -hmm. The suffering cycle is actually quite straightforward. I don't know if you have one of those friends that wake up in the morning and feel super excited. So they call you at 8 a.m. because they have been awake since 6 and they really want to tell you something, right? And so they call you at 8 a.m. You don't answer. So they call at 8.01. You don't answer. So they call at 8.03 and they don't answer. And then they text you. And then they call again. And they're like, I have to talk to them, right? And then at 8.15, you go like, can I call you at 10? Right? And they say, sure. And shut up. Right? That's exactly what your brain does. It, it tells you, hey, by the way, your partner said something harsh on Friday. You don't do anything about it. So it makes you feel unhappy. And then you don't do anything about it. So your brain says it again. And so you feel unhappy and you do nothing about it. And so you, your brain says it again. And again. And again. And again. Is that useful in any way? That cycle wastes your effort, wastes your time, wastes your energy. Yeah. Right? And it leads to nothing at all. Mm -hmm. right? It's triggered by nothing because the event happened last Friday. It leads to cortisol, which actually kills you. Exactly. Right? So, 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 so the, the reality is that cycle truly declines your ability to solve the problem, right? to actually engage. Hmm? And, 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 the, and that's, that's really what, why we say that unhappiness is good for you. No, no. Pain is good for you. Pain is good for you because it alerts you that you need to learn something, you need to change something, you need to take action, you need to change direction. Pain is good. Suffering isn't. So yeah. Ali died. Ali died means I could have closed my door and cried for the rest of my life. Truly. And if you had hugged Ali once, I guarantee you, you wouldn't blame me. He was an angel. He was unbelievable. He was everything. He was my coach, my son. I always say he was my son and my son. Right? Now, what good would that be? At my deathbed, he would still not be here. Right? And, and I know it sounds really unfeeling. No, no, I, I cry every time I remember him. I, I do. But what good is that? Now, suddenly you start to tell yourself, so I feel the pain. And prom I promise you, the one thing that changed my life is I found a way to take that pain every single morning and turn it into, I'm going to go out there and make another thousand people happy. happy. Yeah. Right? Can you actually do that? Can you actually say... And it's like the sun, too. The it, sun. Right? So, so can you take the pain, because the pain is coming from outside you, and instead of turning it into incessant thinking that just tortures you, turn it into energy that makes the world a better place. And, and I have clear examples yeah. of that. Huh? Every morning, I, I have a very simple deal with my brain. I have a deal that says... Got to get that deal. And oh, it's, it's really gotta. straightforward. Huh? You, ha you have to understand this. The thoughts in your head are not you. right? The thoughts in your head are a, are a biological function. This is your brain producing an, a, a concept that you can understand in English. Am I safe? Do I have food? Can I get yeah, sleep? It's, it's, it's basically processing everything. There is an MIT study that is incredible. You should look at it. 2009, they did MRI studies giving people word puzzles. right? And they basically asked them to solve problems. The problem was solved in a few seconds based on how complex the problem is. And then the verbal association engine of your brain, the part that actually lights up when you speak out loud, starts to blink for up to eight seconds. And then the participant would know the answer. So the, pro the brain actually solves the problem first and then takes eight seconds to turn it to English so that you understand it. Right? It's a biological function. How, how many of you wake up every morning and tell yourself, I am blood. You know, the biological function of your heart is to pump blood around your body. 
You don't call yourself blood. No right. one calls themselves urine, right? So seriously, the, the, you know, biological function of your kidney. But somehow we think that the thoughts in my head are me talking to me. If it was you talking to you, what, why would you need to talk? Like seriously, right? Now, one, once you realize that, everything changes.